Hello, welcome to episode 426. We're going to be doing ceiling lights with a shared switch. Now, our last version, I think, was episode 360, and we had the ceiling lights, and you would click on them to turn them off individually. So each one would be click, off, click, off, click, off. Uh, so I thought this time we'd do it so we could turn them off in little groups. So we've got group one, so maybe that's one room, and maybe this is a different room. Okay, so that's the difference, and we're in 1.21, so we've upgraded the spawn eggs and the commands, so they work in 1.21 now. There's no difference between these two lines. The difference is... <laughs> there's no difference. The difference is... Hmm, okay. There's a little bit of a difference. We need five blocks to change the light, and this is quite big to hide behind your wall. So what we can do is just put all of these in loaded chunks somewhere, and then just reference them with this one command block. So that's that's the only difference. They're doing exactly the same thing. This one is set to lights that have an ID of two, which is those ones at the back, and this one is set to lights that have an ID of one. There we go. So now your player can walk into a room. Instead of having to go around and punch every light individually, we can just flick the light switch. Cool. Waffle done. Let's get on and build it now. Okay, so a lot of this is similar to the last version, so let's go a little bit quicker than normal. We're going to need a setup. Uh, it's just going to be... I'm going to set myself up a scoreboard, which is going to contain the state of the light. Is it on or is it off light state? It's going to be a dummy. Done. Boom. Now we're going to have a couple of eggs to make it easier to place these things. Uh, we're in 1.21, so we will have to... Uh, change the eggs from the last version a little bit. Give the nearest player a slime slime spawn egg. Open and close. Uh, let's give it an item name. Item name equals apostrophe apostrophe speech marks speech marks light place and the important stuff is the entity data Entity data, we need an ID. What entity will it spawn? A Minecraft marker. And it will have some tags. Tags. And this one will be a light place. Okay, that's one dump. Done. I'm going to control middle mouse. Copy that. Put it there. Control middle mouse the sign. Because we can edit signs. I always forget. Remove. Pop that on there, let's clear the inventory. And we need to change this to light remove. We'll change its name, light remove. And I'm going to change its color, strider spawn egg. Okay, so we've got two eggs, one for placing, one for removing. And those tags on those are important because that's what we're going to use to target them. So let's have a controller to place. So uh, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to execute at any entity whose type equals Minecraft marker tag equals light place. And amazingly we've managed to make a mistake already. TGA, I don't think that's how you spell tag. There we go. And I'm going to run set block at those coordinates, one of the invisible light blocks, and I'll set its block states level to 15. I done. Now we've got the long command. In fact, you better be on repeat. Chain always active. Okay, we're going to execute at any entity type equals Minecraft marker tag equals light place. We're going to run, summon a block display at those coordinates. In fact, I'm going to lift it up a bit. The marker would be at the bottom of the block. So let's see 0.9 because I want this on the ceiling. Tags. It's going to have two tags. It is part of the light and it is the casing. I don't think we'll ever use the casing tag, but just in case. We'll need a block state. Block state takes a name. Make sure we spell that correctly. 
Okay, and the name I'm going to pick Minecraft Chiseled Polished Blackstone. Okay, and now I need some transformation information. And that's going to go in there. But I, what I've done, let's just press done. Over here, I have copied the default transformation information. So let's have a look at it. Transformation, left rotation, 0001, right rotation, 0001, translation, 000, scale, 111. Let's copy that. Done. Do you want a quick, a, a slow look? The commands are in the description anyway, but if I give you a little slow look, you can pause. So as far as right rotation, let's have a look at that bit there. Then we've gone a bit further. There we go, and that's all of it. So you can pause and look at that, or just copy it from the description, which is easier. F3D, clear the chat. Let's go in here. We've left a space. Bang, let's pop that in. Okay, we'll worry about sorting out this. Well, let's do a scale now. Okay, how big do I want it? I want it smaller than the block, so... Scale... 0.6 on the X and the Z. And the Y... Mm, quite thin, I think. I think we're going to go for 0 0.1. That should be all right for the scale. So translation. I want it centered still, so half of 0 0.6 is 0 0.3. And we put a minus on the front. 0 0.3. And the same for the Z. Put a minus on the front, and half of 0 0.6 is 0 0.3. And for the Y translation... Actually, I'll just leave that as it is. Okay, that little bit's done. Now we're going to need... Some passengers. We're only going to have one. Let's make sure we spell things correctly. Passengers. That's a list. We're only going to have one passenger. If you wanted two, the other passenger will go in there. We're going in here. Okay, so passenger is going to be ID Minecraft block display. Uh, we'll need some tags for it as well. Tags. One, two. It's part of the light, and this will be the bulb. Bulb, and we need a block state. So let's come out of tags. Yeah, a block state. Open and close. Block state takes a name, and I'm going to use Minecraft redstone lamp. Now staying inside block state, but outside the name bit. So let's go out of there in there we're going to do some properties properties and I want lit equals true okay that seems all right and we're going to need some transformation information for that so let's go after properties so we let's come out of properties boink then come out of the block state boink and then we need our transformation information. Let's paste our default down. Oh, we've got red. Don't like that. Because we didn't put a comma first. That was very silly. There we go. Now we've got a comma. Okay, this one's going to be a bit smaller than the casing. It's the bulb, so obviously has to be a bit smaller. So let's do 0 0.5 for the scale on the X and Z. What about the Y? Probably, I don't know, 0 0.1. About the same, because we can just move it down a bit in the translation. So let's do that. Let's move it down a bit in the translation. 0 0.05 down. And we want it centered, so half of 0 0.5 is 0 0.25. Put the minus on the front. And the same for the Z. Okay, that seems all right. Done. And we better kill that marker, otherwise we're going to keep placing those and that would not be a good idea type equals minecraft marker tag equals light place okay done turn it on f3d let's build a ceiling there's my ceiling okay let's cross our fingers and do a test of the place my god it worked first time cool there's our ceiling light uh, now we need to remove it easily, so let's get ourselves a remove. Uh, controller 
remove. First thing we'll do is execute with a marker light remove and rem remove that invisible light. So execute at any entity whose type equals a marker whose tag equals light remove. We will run set block at those coordinates air. So now the light's going to go. And then we better kill the two block displays. So we will execute at any entity type equals marker tag equals light place. No tag equals light remove. <laughs> silly, silly, silly. And we'll have to move it up a bit. So let's say positioned. We went up by 0 0.9, didn't we, last time? So 0 0.9, let's try that again. Kill. Run, kill. Any entity whose type equals block display, tag equals light, who's within distance equals less than 0 0.25. That will probably get it. Done. And then let's kill the marker, kill entity, type equals marker, oh, let's do Minecraft marker, tag equals light, remove, done, turn you on. So we got a light there, let's get our egg, boink, oh, 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 it removed it, but it came straight back. Now that implies to me that this marker is not being killed. And there we go. We've got light hyphen place. So that marker is not being killed. So let's kill that marker. And let's try again. There we go. Okay. Now do we have a million entities built up? We shouldn't have. The remove should have killed them all. But let's do a check. Execute as any entity whose type equals block display run say hi no one said hello let's do teleport myself to any entity whose type equals block display limit equals one no entity was found so i think we're pretty safe we don't think we've got any there so we can place it we can remove it cool Let's move our uh, lights into a nice little line here. Right, I'm going to have one, two lights. Let's turn F3B off so we don't get that annoying blue line. I'm going to give these lights an ID score. So I'm just going to fly up here so they're close to me. And I'm going to say set. No, I'm going to say scoreboard. Hmm, we're going to need an ID, aren't we? Yeah, let's let's make an ID. We haven't made an ID. Set up. Scoreboard objectives. Add light ID as a dummy. Dump. And then we'll do scoreboard players set any entity whose we'll just do tag. Tag equals bulb, and we'll say limit equals two, sort equals nearest, and we're going to set their light ID to one. Done. Okay, so these should both have one, and let's do this. And if we stand here, now these two are the closest, so these two shouldn't be affected, and we'll run the same command again, and we'll change these to two. So these have an ID of one and these have an ID of two. Okay, let's try and activate those. Keep it, keep it nice in line there. There we go. Let's do an activate. All right, the first thing I want to do is toggle its state. So we'll execute. We'll execute, <laughs> execute as any entity whose type equals block display 
whose tag equals bulb. Now, did we, let's do a check. Did we set the scores of the bulb? Yes, we did. Scoreboard player set bulb. Okay. So type tag equals bulb. Um, now we want to check the ID. Scores equals light ID equals one. I'm going to copy all of that. Copy, because we're going to be using that. We will store success in an entity at S into its light state if score store success oh we're not storing success into an entity we're storing success as a score into itself light state if score itself light state matches zero so if it does match zero we'll store a one and if it matches one we'll store a zero so we're toggling that a done now let's paste that in again so we are executing as block display tag bulb scores equals light id one that's okay but we also want to check the light state now so let's inside the scores let's also do light state equals zero and i'm going to copy all of that because we'll be using that next time control copy i will run data modify an entity yourself we're going to modify your block state we're going to set your value we're going to set your name at um actually we don't I don't think we need to set the name because it's we're not changing it from a redstone lamp. So let's just go straight for properties and see if it works. And we'll say lit equals false. Okay, that's that one done. A done. And I'm going to paste that and copy back that beginning bit. Execute as block displays, tag bulb scores, light ID one, light state zero. At yourself. Set at yourself run set block those coordinates light well we're turning it off I suppose level equals zero okay done will that turn it off ah okay okay there's two oh okay because we haven't specified the name redstone lamp it's actually just sort of retracted the lights by the look of it so we do need to go in here and inside our set value we do need to put the name so let's do that name minecraft redstone lamps always worth checking things okay done now pressing this button is probably not going to do anything because they're off already okay so let's copy these Control middle mouse, control middle mouse, and paste them down. And we'll do the on commands. So if you're turning it on, first of all, we're going to be checking light state equals one. And we're going to keep all of that the same. Oh, lit will now equal true. Okay. And light level here will now equal 15. And light state here will now equal one. Okay, let's press it. They're off, they're on, they're off, they're on. And we're only affecting ID one. So you can obviously see all we'd have to do is go through and change the ID to two. So it's a bit of a long switch. This is one thing I don't really like about this. If you've got a wall, you've got five command blocks behind that wall to turn these lights on and off. That's not too bad. I suppose what we could do, let's clear let's play around what we could do is we could take all five of these blocks one two three four five and I am going to take these blocks to the spawn chunks so let's say these are the spawn chunks <laughs> I, I know it's silly we're going to say these blocks here are now in spawn chunks there we go 
And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a little reset down here. Set block one above me to white wall. And then the button I have on my map. So remember these chunk, these ones here are in spawn chunks or any chunks that are always loaded. And this will be the button I have in my actual map. So we'll call this remote activate. And I'm just going to set a redstone block here. And let's see if this works. Set block at those coordinates. Redstone block. Okay. Yeah. There we go. So this is the one we'll hide in the wall. This is the one that's going to sort of activate the actual commands, which could be miles away as long as they're in a loaded chunk. So that's going to save you a bit of space in your building. Cool. And I think we'll say done. Bit of a long one. We've not changed a huge amount, but before we had them individually activated, now you can just walk into the room and the player can turn all the lights on at once. And you can have separate rooms. It doesn't matter really that we've got five commands for each group because these aren't running continuously. In fact, now we've even placed them. These don't even need to be running because we're not placing any more lights. So these are only going to run when the player presses the button. So you could have a stack of a million of these and it's not going to hit your your sort of command performance because they're, they're not running. I think, I think I've said that quite a few times now, haven't I? They're not running. Anyway, as usual, I've been waffling at the end. There we go. We have some ceiling lights, which all use a, sweat, uh, a, a shared switch. And you can have different groups so you can turn different rooms on and off. Take care. I will see you soon. Bye-bye.